Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and today I'm going to make a video on creating wave shapers in Reactor. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a ton of other Reactor content as well as machine tutorials and synth programming tips as well. Alright, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is create a scope so we can take a look at the wave shapes that we're creating. And my favorite way to create a scope is to use an XY module and we're going to change the minimum values in the range um, both the X and Y parameters from 0 to negative 1. Oh, set that one to 1 accidentally. Get it to negative 1. Alright, so let's make this always active and we're going to turn the object type to scope, we're going to turn the cursor to none, we're going to get rid of the label, and good to go. And we're going to run the X input of the scope with a ramp oscillator, which is a strange one, as you can see if you hover over the output, uh, the range goes from 0 to the maximum value, which is supplied by the amplitude input. And like I just said, we've changed the uh, inputs of the XY module so that it ranges from negative 1 to 1. So we're going to modify the output of the ramp oscillator so it matches the values that the XY module is expecting. So we have our value from 0 to 1. We're going to multiply it by 2. So now we have a value ranging from 0 to 2. And then we're going to subtract 1 from that, which is going to give us a final total from negative 1 to 1. Alright, so that's going to supply the X input for the XY module. And to supply the Y input for the um, XY, we're going to use a function that will be our wave shaper. So the wave shaper is going to take an input named X and it's going to have an output named Y and we're going to use X to calculate Y. And generally speaking we want to make nonlinear functions and I'll show you what that means. So a linear function at its simplest form is something like Y equals X. And if we look at this on the graph you'll see that the output is um, a straight line. And, you know, if we did something like y equals negative x, it would also be linear. If we did um, y multiplied by a constant value, that will always be linear as well. So these are the sort of functions that don't really do much. I mean, this is basically just an amplifier that cuts the amplitude in half. So, we want to come up with some slightly more creative functions for creating a wave shaper. And there is one general rule we want to follow, which is regardless of the size of x, we want the output y to always be within the range from negative 1 to 1. And I'll show you a function that has this property. We're going to take x and we're going to get the absolute value of x, the rectify function, and add 1 to it. And we're going to divide x over this newly calculated value that we have here. So the end result of this is that regardless of what the value on the top of our divide signal is, the value on the bottom is always going to be larger and a smaller value divided by a larger value will always be less than 1. So even if x was equal to like a thousand here, you know, the bottom part of the division is going to be equal to a thousand point, a thousand and one, and a thousand over a thousand and one is almost one, but it's still less than one. So the larger x gets, the closer y gets to 1, and the smaller x gets in the negative direction, the closer y will get to negative 1, but it will never reach either of those values. And 
Generally, you want to amplify the input to your wave shaper in order to get a better range out of it. You see right now that our maximum value is about 0.5 um, because you know we get an x of 1, we add 1 to it, so 1 over 2 equals 0.5. So let's increase the value of x. I'm going to do that by giving ourselves a amplitude knob to work with here. And we'll just connect it to all of the inputs that it was previously connected to, the subtract module and the amplitude input of the ramp oscillator. And we're going to have this value get pretty large. So we're going to end up dividing our input to the XY module by this value as well. We're going to give it a maximum range of about 64, minimum range of 1, step size of 1. Alright, so at this point in time, our ramp oscillator is um, ranging from negative 64 to positive 64, which is fine for the input to our shaper, but we want to get back into the negative 1 to 1 range for our XY module. And you'll see it works like that. And now we can use the amplitude knob to control the shape of our function. All right, so another common type of wave shaper uses the arctan function. So let's just look at that for a moment find the arctan function in the math menu of the built-in module section all the way at the bottom and the output of the arctan module is going to max out at around 0.25 so we can actually multiply the output by 4 to give us a whole range um, from negative 1 to 1 And it's going to give us a very similar but slightly different waveform. Alright, so the most common way to test a wave shaper is to use a sine oscillator, which can sometimes give you slightly fraudulent results, but it's usually very useful because it's such a simple waveform, you can really hear the difference a lot easier. Alright, so that about wraps up this tutorial. If you're interested in the subject of wave shaping, it's advisable to use oversampling. Um, I have a whole series of tutorials on oversampling with some very simple wave shaper downloads at the end, and I'll provide a link to that in the uh, description for the video. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this tutorial, please check out our website, reactortutorials.com, where we have a ton of other reactor material. All right, have a good week.